chapter 12, the very end of it. It's called The Veil Removed. This is the ineffable secret, the ultimate illumination, the key to peace and power. You are God. Those are the three magic words. If you will accept this towering truth and dare to stand atop this magnificent pinnacle, universal consciousness will be revealed to you from within. God is there. It is he who peers from behind your eyes, who is your own consciousness, who is your very self. You are not just a part of God, you are altogether God. And God is altogether you. Now, that's scary stuff for a lot of people. We weren't raised to believe that. I'm not saying that you ought to go out into the world and say, excuse me, but uh, you know who you're talking to, that I am God. And the reason that we laugh is because we think of God as the God that we've created in our own image. The God of the ego, the God who's angry, the God who wants special favors, the God who has the ability to heal but withholds it. But there's another word that Jesus used in the New Testament, and this is the God I speak of, quoting him. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in me and I in him. God is love, pure, unconditional, blissful, divine love. That's who you are. The second great teaching was a man named Neville. Neville Goddard passed away in 1972. Lectured over in California, particularly in the 40s and 50s and 60s. I read his book, The Power of Awareness, seven times. I gave it to each one of my children at Christmas a couple of years ago and they called me up and they said, Dad, it's great, but I don't understand it. It's a little heavy. I said, well, then maybe it's part of my Dharma to make it a little clearer. And chapter 27, the last chapter of his book, The Power of Awareness, it says this. In all of creation, in all of eternity, in all the realms of your infinite being, the most wonderful fact is that which is stressed in the first chapter of this book. You are God. You are the I am that I am. You are consciousness. You are the creator. This is the mystery. This is the great secret known by the seers and prophets and mystics throughout the ages. This is the truth that you can never know intellectually. If you want to understand something intellectually, what you must do is analyze it come up with a formula for it, <clears throat> study it, look at other experts about it, and come up to a conclusion. If you want to understand something spiritually, you must first experience it. You must come to know this within. In the New Testament, which I read completely before I wrote Wishes Fulfilled, Jesus is about to be stoned. And he says, why would you stone me? And they say, because you blaspheme. You are a man, and you claim to be God. And Jesus responds in his words, Is it not written in your laws that I have said, You are gods, all of you. We are all gods. We have within us, not the God that so often we are taught is outside of us, but the God that is love, the God that is perfect love the soul that wants to expand because it is infinite and doesn't want to be restricted. And I came across some great teachings that were sent to me. They showed up, as we often think they show up as accidents, but you come to realize that there are no accidents in this universe. Everything that takes place is have the pieces moved around by something bigger than all of us. And so it was called the I Am Discourses. And I quote from the I Am Discourses. The first expression of every individual everywhere in the universe, either in spoken word, silent thought, or feeling, is I Am, recognizing its own conquering divinity. The student, me, you, all of us, endeavoring to understand and apply these mighty yet simple laws must stand guard more strictly over his thoughts and expression in words 
or otherwise. For every time you say, I am not, I cannot, I have not, you are, whether knowingly or unknowingly, throttling that great presence within you. These words, I am, I opened up this program with the words, I am well, I am perfect health. And where do you think they came from? What do these words, I am, mean? A very quick <coughs> retracing of the story of Moses. Moses, this little baby who was born at a time when the Pharaoh had ordered all male children to be drowned in the Nile, and Moses' mother took his little baby, put him in a basket, and floated him down the Nile. Moses was discovered by the Pharaoh's daughter. The Pharaoh's daughter raised Moses as her own son and the Pharaoh's grandson. But along in his late teen years, he got into a conflict and ended up seeing uh, one of the Isra Israelite slaves being mistreated, and he ended up killing him. So Moses had to take off because he was afraid for his own life. And he went out into the Sinai, and there married Zipporah and had children and was out as a shepherd. And as the Torah tells us, as it says in Exodus, he um, comes across a burning bush one day that is not being consumed. And the bush speaks to him. And rather than even misquote this even a little, I brought from my hotel room. <laughs> You wouldn't steal the Bible, would you, Wayne? No, I'll put it back. <laughs> so the bush speaks uh, in Exodus chapter 3 and says, Moses, Moses. And the first words that Moses says to God are, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near here, this place. Take off your sandals and your, for your feet, for this place where you stand is holy ground. And, and God speaks to Moses and says, I want you to go to the Pharaoh and I want you to free your people. And Moses is going, whoa, wait, wait, hold on here. Who am I? And who are you? Moses says to God, who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses says to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel, and I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God says to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. My name is, I am that I am. Now, every single time that you use the words, I am, you are citing the name of God right from the holiest books. And every time you say the words, I am weak, I am poor, I am unlucky, I am unhappy, I am sick, I am unable to attract into my life what you want. You are desecrating the name of God. God did not say, I will be. My name is, I hope things work out well. <laughs> my, na my name is, maybe things will show up that I wanted, but possibly not. He said, I am that I am. You must be conscious of how you use these words. I am. I am strong. I am well. I am content. Even if your senses tell you something different, I am. And as we move now into the meat of this program, you'll see that putting the words I am in front of something into your mind and imagination is a very powerful way to attract into your life recognizing your own divinity I am God is not blasphemy it is your identity